On the Sunday, Palm Sunday before Passover, Jesus had presented himself to Israel as their king by fulfilling the prophecy of Zechariah 9.9, riding into Jerusalem on a donkey. On Monday morning, as he'd come into Jerusalem, he'd seen a fig tree, and he pronounced judgment on it because it had leaves but no fruit. When he came to the temple, he expelled those who traded buying and selling doves and lambs and changing money, saying, My father's house is a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. And he wouldn't allow people to carry stuff through the temple. The following morning, Tuesday morning, as they came back into Jerusalem, Peter noticed that the fig tree was absolutely dead and was surprised. And Jesus urged them to have faith in God. The interpretation of what he said is that judgment is coming again on Jerusalem. The nation will be dispersed among the Gentiles. And this is really going to be a very shocking thing. But God's people are to trust God in the midst of this huge disaster. They are to pray. There will be a remnant that are saved. But make sure you're in that remnant. And so whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him that your Father in heaven may also forgive your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father in heaven forgive your trespasses. And of course, if you're not forgiven, you do not bear fruit, and you'll be judged as the fig tree was. But this is all symbolic of Israel. And so Mark now takes us through some encounters that Jesus has with various groups in Jerusalem who challenge his authority who want to justify rejecting him, to find fault with him. So we read from Mark chapter 11, verse 27. Then they came to Jerusalem, and as he was walking in the temple, the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders came to him. And they said to him, By what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you this authority to do these things? But Jesus answered and said to them, I also will ask you one question, then answer me, and I will tell you by what authority I do these things. The baptism of John, was it from heaven or from men? Answer me. And they reasoned among themselves, saying, If we say from heaven, he will say, Why then did you not believe him? And if we say from men, they feared the people. For all counted John to have been a prophet indeed. So they answered and said to Jesus, We do not know. And Jesus answered and said to them, Neither will I tell you by what authority I do these things. My name's Arthur and I thank you for joining me as we share together from Mark 11 verses 27 to 33. Jesus often spoke in the countryside. But when he came into the city, it was either in a house or in the synagogue or in the temple that he taught. He didn't cause a ruckus in the street to disrupt society. But in the temple, he came as the Son of God. My father's house shall be called a house of prayer, he'd said. So this was his territory. In fact, the New Testament will later identify Jesus as the true high priest appointed by God, in contrast to those who had been given authority as servants in the house of God to care for it, but had established their own ways rather than walking in God's way. When Jesus came into the temple, there were always crowds of people who were ready to listen to him and gathered around him. And these, in a sense, protected Jesus, because The authorities could not move against him when he was so popular. They wanted to maintain face. They needed to maintain their credibility. Nevertheless, Jesus was now acting in a most outrageous way, completely disrupting the custom and practices of many years. He was not permitting them to sell the lambs for sacrifice and to change the money and to sell the doves. In fact, two years earlier, he had done the same thing, driven out the money changes, and now he's doing it again. They could sell the lambs outside the temple courtyard, and I'm sure that's what they did. 
and so a delegation of the rulers come. We have the chief priests, we have scribes, and we have the elders. These are representatives of the Sanhedrin, the highest Jewish court in the land. By what authority are you doing these things? Who authorised you to do this? Well, his authority is that he is the Son of God. This is my house. This is a temple which speaks of him and is all about him. But this is something that they are not willing to accept. And so, as often, he responds to their question with a question for them. It's a procedure of of establishing the base on which we're having this discussion. And his question is a simple one. The baptism of John, was it from heaven or from men? Answer me. Jesus focuses on the baptism that John the Baptist performed. While the Jewish people had many washing rituals, baptisms, the baptism of John was distinctly different. They had come and quizzed him, why are you baptising? And he'd specifically pointed out it was to prepare people for the coming of the Messiah. He was a voice in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. So the question was, did John the Baptist have authority to be a prophet from God? Or was he just preaching off his own bat? This was a question that the authorities would not answer. Because everyone recognised John was a prophet. In fact, 20 years later, we find John still had his disciples over in Ephesus. John had had a huge impact on the Jewish nation, preparing them for the Messiah. A lot of the anticipation of the Messiah was because John had stirred it up. So, if they were to say John did not come from God, then the crowd would laugh at them, because everyone knew that John was from God. But John hadn't received their authority. He'd spoken out in the wilderness. But he was born of a priestly family. His father had served in the temple. And so he was one of them, but his preaching didn't have their authority. He'd grown up in the wilderness. He hadn't learned in their schools. So if John had authority, surely Jesus could claim authority as well particularly because John had pointed to Jesus as the Messiah. They discussed their answer. If we say John had his authority from heaven, Jesus will say, well, why didn't you believe him? Because John had pointed to Jesus, the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. This is the Christ, the Messiah. When Jesus was baptised by John, John saw the Holy Spirit descending upon him. And from after that date, John proclaimed that Jesus was the Messiah. He must increase, I must decrease. And the Pharisees had witnessed John's teaching. The scribes and chief priests and lawyers knew what John taught. And John had given his blessing on Jesus. So they couldn't say, they couldn't say John had no authority from God. But they couldn't say he had authority from God either because they claimed to be following God's way. It was a refusal to answer the question. So Jesus says, well, neither will I tell you by what authority I do these things. We have authority from God to preach the gospel. But that authority is not always recognised by others. And if we are challenged, we need to respond in a way similar to the way Jesus responded. In our society... Do we have freedom of religion? Do we have freedom of speech? Are we able to express the things that we sincerely believe? It's claimed to be a right that we have in our society. It's a foundational principle that people have the right to worship God as they understand and know him. Now that's not a permission to, but it definitely is a permission to declare the gospel. But there are those who do not want to hear that message and will seek to silence it. And this is what the authorities were doing with Jesus. But if they do not accept the principle, then there is no answer for them. So Jesus says, well, neither will I tell you by what authority I do these things.